I do love to surprise FaceTime people. Mm. And for the most part, it's like a happy reception. Like, what are you doing? Yeah. What's this about? Yeah. You know, like. And then yeah. you just say, no reason. How what? you doing? How and then they're you? like, ah, I, miss you. I don't know what to say. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Why can't we text about this and then yeah. move on with our lives? Hey, all you cats and kittens, Adam Ray here. Thanks for listening, watching to the About Last Night podcast. Welcome back to the show. If you haven't uh, subscribed yet, subscribe right here, baby, on YouTube. Enjoy the show every Monday. Uh, audio and uh, is, is also available for you. Spotify, uh, Apple Podcasts, wherever you get your pods. Join the fun. Join the party. Subscribe. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at ALN Podcast. Follow me at Adam Ray Comedy on uh, TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter. Tour dates at AdamRayComedy.com. This week I'll be in Detroit for two shows at the House of Comedy as part of the uh, the um, uh, comedy festival out there. Come see me, House of Comedy, two shows, September 17th. And then uh, September uh, 30th through October 1st, I'll be at uh, the Improv in Raleigh, North Carolina. I think those are the dates. It's the last weekend in September, early October. Raleigh Improv, North Carolina. Come see your boy. Tickets at AdamRayComedy.com. Got some dates with Sal Volcano coming up in, uh, in, in Knoxville, Alabama, and Atlanta. And then uh, San Jose, Santa Rosa, Sacramento. We got Seattle, Portland, Vegas coming up. All at AdamRayComedy.com. We can get your Adam Ray merch, your ALN podcast merch. Uh, tell your friends, tell your family about the pod. Uh, spread the good word. We've got a lot of bangers coming up. Anthony Jeslinek coming up next week. And some more hitters after that. Gene Smart from Hacks. Adam Devine. A lot of uh, a lot of good shit coming. Young Rock, of course, premieres November 4th on NBC. Welcome to Chippendales. Comes out November 22nd on Hulu. Uh, and, uh, and working on a comedy special as well. So with all the uh, bullshit out of the way, enjoy this special episode today with uh, a second-time ALN guest. She hasn't been on uh, since the Brad Williams days. You know her from Mad TV, her countless stand-up specials uh, and late-night appearances, and she's just a gangster in the comedy world, has an insane fan base, and she's fucking hilarious. So enjoy the great Angela Johnson. Hey, it's Herbert. Mm-hmm. And you're listening to the About Last Night podcast, you slippery little son of a bitch. Mm-hmm. Guys, well, welcome back to the show. Angela Johnson here, legend, baller, dancer, comedian, <laughs> actress. Um, I'd almost say baller uh, first before dancer because you have the swagger of a dancer, and I'd say I noticed that almost uh, instantaneously when I first met you. I was like, oh, you carry yourself like you've been doing this for a fucking while. Because I'm a tomboy, so I... I... <laughs> yeah, you are? The second I... I operate in my feminine that's when i'm least confident yes and that's when you'll see like oh she's a little bit insecure but when i have like my tennies on yeah and like either my my sweats or like jeans or whatever then i have a swagger to me because i feel like i could fight anybody holy because i'm casual <laughs> have you gotten into fights let's shift no, gears no no no, no 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 you do strike me as someone though who could grab a hair oh or, yeah i mean a, a set of a head of hair and do some twisting and turning. And, when I was young. Yeah. When I was young. I'm not confrontational, to be honest. Like, right. I do not love confrontation. But I have this, like, essence about me that it's, like, I can turn it on when I need to. I try. I don't want to. Yeah. Like, that, I did a joke a long time ago. I was like, listen, I don't want to fight you. <laughs> <laughs> but. Uh, <yeah. laughs> what part does that come from just, like. I don't know. I guess in all of us, right? We all have that switch that can flip mm. and uh, turn things up a notch. And push comes to shove, and shove comes to push. And you're like, yeah. "There's going to be some shoving and some pushing, and yeah. I'm going to throw down." But it's like there's something that I guess stops us from that. But did you see people fight around you, like at school? Like, was there something that made you just go, "Oh, that's not for me," or was it just like, "I'm a, I want to try to talk through this"? That like, was my my dream was. So, oh, I brought you my book. It's in the car. I'll Please. get it after yep. this. Great. <laughs> but my we'll book talk all about it. is called uh, Who Do I Think I Am? Stories of Chola Wishes and Caviar Dreams because I wanted to be a chola. I wanted to be in a gang. I wanted to get in fights and like all of that kind of stuff. Now it's so like opposite of who I really am. But yeah. it, like growing up, it's yeah. like what I idolized and what I wanted 
to be like i wanted that thug life like i would ask my mom like mom do we have any family members in prison <laughs> like i was looking for street cred and she was like no we're not that family what are yeah, you talking about yeah how do i get uh yeah how do i get some blood crips at my birthday party <laughs> did you know anybody ours the... was norteños and sureños that's what ours was <laughs> that's the equivalent yeah yeah in Nor red and blue yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. in norcal right where you grew up yeah what part exactly again san jose san jose that's right yeah bay area that's why you rep, well, that's, I mean, that must have been extra special then to be a Raider at. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Any family members that were fucking freaking out because they were diehard Raider fans? Most. Yeah. Well, my Thea Mary, she's 102 right now. Currently? Yes. She's still with oh, us, shout 102. Out. Shout out to Thea Mary. Um, What's the secret, by the way? She didn't have any kids. That's her secret. Oh, man. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. I'm, 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 my fiance and I go back and forth, but that. It's pieces of info like that that make me go, oof. I know. Might be skipping this boat. I know. <laughs> I know. Um, but my Thea Mary, she's 102. And um, listen, I've I've done a couple things. I've done a couple movies. I've done some TV shows. Oh, yeah. I have a few hour specials yeah. out there. Um, she has a picture of me in my Raider at uniform, my Raider at headshot in a frame in the living room. And anytime anybody comes to the house, whether it's uh, the cable guy, uh, the mailman, any kind of vendor of some sort coming to the house to do any kind of service. She always shows them my picture oh. and she says, this is my niece. She was a raiderette. Oh. Skip all the movies or anything. Her most prized Just, yeah. moment and highlight raiderette. of your life. Mm -hmm. There wow. it is. Uh, the book is, uh, I'm about three audio chapters deep. Oh, thank you for it's, even listening at all. Fuck yeah, and I'm going to finish it. I I don't think I've read an actual book in quite some time. Yeah. Once audiobooks became the thing. And also, it's just like, I don't know, to get to hear it in your voice. Right, right. I feel like is the way to do it. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Because like, I don't know, there's just so much. It's the same way when sometimes, I don't know if you get deep in a text exchange and you're like, God, there's no tone. There's no, I can't uh -huh. like, a smiley face or an emoji is just not doing it. I need to, I need to hear it, yeah. to really communicate we should and, pick up the phone again is what you're saying i guess we should I don't start know. doing some, phone calls again but we all have some people i am that like, person though. i just need to text i am that person i am the phone call person yeah that like i i do surprise facetimes like i'm that jerk like Ooh. i'm the one who's what's the percentage just, like, of pickups um it's pretty good yeah. actually although i did surprise facetime somebody today and he did not answer and Yikes. i was like okay that was give or i didn't know if that one was gonna work or not but um i do love to surprise facetime people mm. and for the most part it's like a happy reception like what are you doing yeah. what's this about yeah you know like and then yeah. you just say no reason how what? you doing how and then are they're you? like ah, I, miss you. I don't know what to say yeah, yeah. <laughs> why can't we text about this and then yeah. move on with our lives um you uh you have a really great uh I mean, obviously, delivery, cadence, all that. Thank the you. sound of your voice is easy to listen to, which Thanks. I feel like helps a lot, especially with almost eight hours of the book, right? Thank you, Audio. because if you read some of my TikTok comments, they will say the opposite about oh, my voice. Fuck that. I TikTok know. TikTok <laughs> audience is like, I don't know. The, as much as TikTok has to offer, there's like, I feel like the audience, the, the trolls, the yelpers, the people oh, yeah. that really want to, yeah, yeah. they're they're on there so much that they, almost, they get... Um, they get upset with themselves, I think, for being on there so much. Yeah. It's like you almost get, something gets pent up, you get angry, and you're like, I need to channel this somehow. Yeah. Why not do it while I'm, but I'm not, I don't want to get off TikTok, but yeah, I'm definitely yeah. angry now. Yeah. <laughs> from knowing that I've spent four to eight hours on this app. Yeah. Do, do you have a uh, TikTok, um, I don't know, something that you can get lost in a rabbit hole, recipes, dances? Oh, I love watching people cooking food. Yeah, I'm obsessed. Love that. Um, especially when it's like um, something that I feel like I could actually make. Mm. Because if it looks too hard, then I'm like, I'll ne I'm never going to do this. Yeah. Let me find something easy. And I never do the easy thing too. But at least if I think that I could possibly make this, yeah. then I'm like, oh yeah, let's watch more of these. Like a PB&J? Oh, and, and I like, yes. Yeah. But I also go down the rabbit holes of like pimple popping videos. Obsessed. Let's get into this right now. Bro, do you watch on. teeth cleaning videos? What? Mother effer teeth cleaning videos, bro. Like... Like just a can't like a where they go in and scrape the tartar off oh. of like people who have never brushed their teeth in oh. their entire life. Oh no! It's unreal. It's painful, first of all, to be on the receiving oh, yeah. end of that. Oh yeah. But wait, so watching it, what's more? Um, 
I guess, uh, rewarding watching those or the, or the pimple pops. Okay, so those actually have like ASMR sound to it. So if you enjoy sounds Ooh. of oh that, God. right? Just... Yeah, you, that and okay, here's going, another ah, one. Ah, this ah, one's kind of ah. gross. You don't hear the people think odd. Um, but okay, this one's kind of gross. Please. But I'm going to just admit Let's it because yes. we're talking about yes. it. Um, ingrown toenails. Dear God. Pedicures. Oh. It's gross, but I can't stop watching them. Because why? It's the same thing about pimple popping. Yeah. I don't know what is so uh, gratifying about watching a blackhead be released into the earth and be (laughs) like, you're free. It's almost like when you see in, I don't know what movies, let's say Pee Wee's Big Adventure when he lets all the animals out of the shelter. Okay, sure. You know, there's a sense of like enjoyment of like, they're free. Yeah. Let them out. They're not supposed to be in those cages. Yeah, same thing. Same thing a, with a black toenail, like it's been painful. You can see the pressure on that toe. And then they use these tools that it's so smooth the way they cut the toenail. Wow. It's like really cool. Have you had yourself- and disgusting, of course. Um, and maybe this is a spoiler, but is there a chapter? I, I, I like how thorough you have gotten thus far in the book just about what made you funny. What I really resonated with was, and I'm going to forget, the teacher that that uh, told you you were going to be on SNL one day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just, I think every comedian has some professor, teacher, faculty member that was like, hey, I'm not, like, I'm recognizing that you got something. Yeah. There's a time and a place. Or yeah. fucking the teacher that goes, let me find a way for you to do this more in yeah. class because it's awesome and I want to encourage it. Yeah. And then I think we all had teachers and more often than not, they were just like, stop being fucking annoying yeah. and and distracting. Yeah. Um, that's uh, That was really cool to hear that and, and uh, because I feel like that, I think that's the case more than not, but I, just from talking to people about uh, that time in their life and developing their comedic sensibility, a lot have told me that they didn't have any that kind of pulled them aside and that were like, oh, fucking, you got, there's something uh, that you should really hone here. I mean, there's that as well as like, there's great to have somebody um, support you yeah. in like who you are. But then there's also like, I didn't know that I was funny. Like I didn't know, like my dad is funny, my sibling, like we're all, like we're just a funny family, yeah. you know? And so I was just like being my personality. And I think I, I did, it didn't, strike me that I am um, different than some people. Yes. Like I was just like operating. It's fair to say that, right? A comedian, you're different. I guess, right? Yeah, in a good way. Yeah, yeah. So I I didn't know. And then to like have somebody be like, oh yeah, go do this in Mr. Works class. Oh, do this. Like Miss Samora was just like, my cheerleader and almost like my hype man. Like, oh yeah, yeah, go, go do it. And be like, really? Okay. So you had your ability to like, want to perform or like just be in front of people was never really an issue and so then you had people kind of like pointing that out to you i was shy growing up okay younger preschool like um, my toddler years very shy growing up yeah my first preschoolers are shy i mean i guess yeah i don't remember any like big dick energy in preschool (laughs) like some kid walking in just dropping his lunchbox being like I ain't reading today. So right. Like, All right, fuck. Right, right. Cl- Clayton's on one. I'm <laughs> not Clayton. Yeah. Um, I th- my first year cheerleading, I was eight years old, and I was Whoa. so shy as a cheerleader. I wouldn't look up from the ground. I wouldn't smile or anything. I was very shy. And then the next year, it was just like, I came out of my shell. She's a performer now. Wow. Yeah. That's so crazy to even think that there was a time when you are like, had stage fright. Oh, yeah. Because now... I mean, and we were talking about this before we uh, start recording, but I was asking if you still love right stand up. As I think that's the challenge too of like finding ways to not only just keep it fresh for yourself, but yeah. still. I mean, you've been doing these massive theater tours now for a while, which I'm very jealous of. And I'm like, how could you not that not be awesome every time? But I'm sure, just like any job, like you see these bands that are. I got some friends that are. Um, uh, just getting going and some that have been doing it 30 years and and I just saw them at Red Rocks and they were you know a little like yeah it's, you know it's cool it's it's, it's and I'm just job, like you're doing yeah. Red Rocks again like this and yeah. there's but it's just kind of very 30 years of doing yeah. it there's kind of like it's a little of the uh, lust has been taken away I would say I've found a new joy in stand-up cool um 
almost in a way that I didn't have before. Um, when I first started doing stand up, I didn't want it. I didn't want to be a comedian. I was trying to be an actress and I kind of fell into it. So it was it wasn't something that I was like chasing hardcore. Um, when things took off for me, I enjoyed it and I had fun, but I felt like in the first like five years, I had this love hate relationship with it because I wanted to be an actress, mm. but I couldn't book anything. Right. Like, no, I wanted to be an actress. Nobody else wanted me to be an actress. Right. You know what I mean? Right. So it was like, okay, well, stand up is working. Let me keep doing this then. And it wasn't until, I don't know, after that, after at least five years in, that I started really owning the fact that I was a comedian and, and enjoying it, but I would enjoy it with anxiety, mm. you know, and with, um, uh, a lot of anxiety. Uh, but I feel like recently this most recent tour, I've probably had the most fun that I've ever had doing stand up, And I think it has a lot to do with taking a big long break of mm. 2020. Yeah. Um, re aligning. What do I want? with my life where do I want to put my energy you know because in our industry we can get caught up in that hustle that grind of like like everybody okay he's being a director maybe I should be a director okay this person's doing a podcast maybe I should do a podcast they have a YouTube channel I should do a YouTube channel and then we start like pouring ourselves into all these different things that may not be for you but it's just we see what other people are doing and we're like oh, okay maybe I should be doing that and we start putting our energy next thing you know you're like depleted of energy and the the one thing or the few things that you're actually supposed to be giving yourself to you only have minimal bits of yourself to give because you're wasting Whoa, energy yeah. in in all these other things that aren't for you it's like you have this garden that everyone has their own garden of their own dreams their own career and everything and you start watering weeds that are not necessary and you start watering this so i feel like for me 2020 when uh, it was like taking my hands off the garden and not watering anything, letting all the weeds die, let everything in there die that was not meant to be for me. And whatever was left standing, I was like, okay, that's for me, that's for me, that's for me. That's what I'm going to pour myself into. That's what I really want. That's what really speaks to my heart. That's what really brings me joy to participate in. Wow. Too deep. No, I just feel like we should end the podcast on that. Okay, thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, thanks for being here. Um, <laughs> wait, have that takes a lot to get to a place to where you're, um, I don't know, looking through that set of goggles and being confident enough to go. I'm gonna just like chill out and and not and take the the your foot off the gas, basically, which oh, yeah. is what we're conditioned to do after a while. You're like, I want to work hard to get busy, and then my mom tells me all the time, she's like. Did you sleep? Did you blah, blah? And I'm just like, I didn't work hard to get to a place now to yeah. where I'm busier to then slow down. Like, yeah. if anything, it's just more now. And now you just hopefully get better at finding time to decompress or whatever and just take, you know, care of yourself. But uh, it's so important, which though. is a challenge. Yeah. How do you do that? How do you self? So, what's crazy is um, before the pandemic, I had actually planned on taking a sabbatical for 2020. Whoa. So, I had no dates on the books for 2020 where. A lot of people had to cancel tours like there was a lot of of tours that were canceled projects that were canceled I had nothing on my books because I knew I needed to take a break because I was running on fumes yeah I was creating still but I was creating out of um, like uh, not not joy, not because I'm a creative person. I was mm. creating out of like survival mode. Necessity, yeah. Exactly. I'm creating because I'm, I'm trying to keep up with yeah. the Joneses. Yes. I'm, I'm instead of creating because I'm just a creative person. So I needed to really just stop and take a break, realign myself with God, with my own heart, what I wanted. I just, I needed to pause. Yeah. And so I had planned to take a break. And in January of that year, 2020, uh, January and February, I doubted that decision so hard. Yeah. I was like, oh no, what did I do? I messed up. It felt like I had taken myself out of the algorithm of life. Yeah. And I was like, oh no. Whoa, that's terrifying. Everybody's gonna forget about me. Yeah. I'm gonna take a whole year off there and be like, who what happened to her? When I come back, there's everybody's gonna be there's somebody hey, new. Sorry. There's yeah, like we got another Angela Johnson. Exactly. Sorry. We already we moved on. We 
I'm, they're going to forget about me. Like all this like doubt of like, you were a coward. That's why you took a break. Not because you needed it. Just because you were a coward. Like, look at your friends. They're still hustling. Look at all this person. Like, look at Eliza. She's crushing it. I'm sure she's tired too. Look yeah. at Joe. He's, he's tired too, but they're still crushing it. Like you were just a coward. Like I start really just going Damn. in on myself. And I was like, oh you do my Do this gosh. just internally or do this in the mirror like out loud? Uh, it, internally and to my husband yeah, as yeah, well. And just like crying and being yeah. like, what did I do? Yeah. Like, I, I thought I needed this, but maybe I didn't. And trying to come to terms with that. And I remember in that time too, I was like, okay, well, I'll just make the best of it, whatever it is. And the next thing you know, COVID happened and everybody ended up taking a break. And it was my sabbatical year where I, I really just unplugged. I didn't try to create anything during that time. That was I my didn't, next question. I yeah. didn't try to find a new outlet. I didn't try to be, let me do an online show. I was like, no, I'm, I am done. You're taking this time to yes. truly chill. Cause yeah. that's what you felt like you were going to do anyway. Yeah. And now you have full uh, jurisdiction yeah. to do that. Yeah. Wow. How was, uh, I just had this conversation with somebody the other day about, um, and then we were just joking about how some people really, they feel bad because they're like, okay, I know COVID was terrible, but like I fucking thrived. As right, far as, right. as far as I think doing what we're talking about, which is like taking a step back and, and not feeling, taking the pressure off mm -hmm. because you're like, there's no reason for me to be giving myself a hard time. Mm -hmm. I should be t cutting all, myself all the slack because there's nothing up to a certain point. And then I think we all probably were like, all right, does it feel like things are starting to come back? Should I maybe do a few Zoom shows or find some clubs that are going because things are going to come back and then it's just going to be, and I want to be somewhat prepared or should I truly just like, you know, yeah. relish in the fact that there's nothing to do? Yeah. Did you enjoy or hate that? Enjoyed it. Yeah. Every bit Could of do, it. Yeah, I know. Like minus what was happening in the world because yes. it was like people were of dying course. You left take that and right out of the and there's all of like uh, black lives matters like all the things that was really starting to happen during that time it, there were some really dark times but for me personally there was a lot of rest that was happening and rejuvenation um i mean my husband and i started doing TikTok dance videos yeah. and just like being silly we were did you guys like reconnect more did you find that yeah yeah, yeah it was great we we were cooking and i never cook like we're cooking recipes i built a garden in my backyard we started gardening i was like who i was a hippie i started doing meditation <laughs> and like yoga every day like oh I, I was really so you found like a routine I did, and yeah. I enjoyed. It. I got to enjoy my house for the first time ever. I had been living there for five years, but I was on tour the whole time. The so it was fuck? the first time I was like, I have a balcony. I should put furniture out here. I finally put furniture on my balcony that I would then use every night that yeah. I never ever went on my balcony before. What did you do on the balcony? I did my meditation. Look at I the stars. Did, oh yes, look at the city. Look at the lights. Everything. To have my glass of wine. Just relax. Just enjoy. So you, uh, that was my next question. I didn't know um, if you had cocktails from time to time and what your drink of choice. Oh. Yeah, you like to throw down. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we've truly partied like at a yeah. comedy club or at a, I missed your, and I was really bummed about it, your, um, what's that big? My birthday. Yes. Yes, my 40th epic. birthday. Wow. It was amazing. I wish you could have been there. Me we too. did a high school theme party where everybody had to dress like they dressed in high school. And we had a whole backdrop with like lockers and it was like a high school dance. So it was like everybody oh, was coming to a high school dance. Oh my God. It was incredible. It was so fun. Yeah. The, uh, just the nostalgia factor was like very. Oh yeah. And there was people who came like, you know, schoolgirls, jocks with their letterman jackets, <laughs> pulled out the storage, um, cholos, uh, full on just like fubu gear. Yeah. Um, just, I, my husband and I came, um, Tommy Hill figured out just like the baggy pants just 90s full on like 90s hip hop. Yes. Um it was great. It was it was fun. And so you went for it. That oh, was yeah, like your you're yeah. like I have a Uber or DD waiting in the wings. Yeah. I'm gonna... Well actually I didn't drink that night. Cuz you're hosting. Cuz I'm hosting. Oh, man, so yeah. I It is always a little weird when the host just gets fucked up. Yeah, yeah. I did I I in really Unless enjoyed it's your myself. house cuz then you can slip out and dip out whenever yeah, you want. Yeah, it wasn't my house. Yeah. But we were at somebody else's house. Yeah. But um I enjoyed like 
um, being present in the moment. And I'm like, I'm 40. Like, this is big deal. Yeah. This is this is it. And I you enjoyed- You still look like you're in your 20s, by the way. Thank you so much. I don't know what you do. Oh my God, thank What's you. What's your skincare regime? Mm, moisturizer. I'll give it to you. For real? <laughs> yeah. You, are you kidding me? Look at your skin. Not one wrinkle on your face. Yeah, I don't know. Noxema from time to time. And I was asking you yeah. about your shaving. Oh, yeah, yeah, You have a fresh, clean shave fresh right Fresh, clean now. shave. You said- when? Why? What makes you decide, like, I'm going to shave today? What is it? So the, the grays have started to pop through, but I'm uh-huh. fine with that. Um, As you should be. That's salt yeah. and pepper for men. It's salt sexy for men. Yeah, women, women, we are the ones who have to hide it. Exactly. Um, I um, I don't know. I think it just, I literally will just wake up and look at myself in one way and just be like, it's, it's gone. Don't like it. <laughs> it's it maybe, I don't know if it's first thing in the morning, because that's always just like a, a weird like sizing yourself up when you're half asleep and being like, oh, fucking, what's going on? The worst time to make decisions. Yeah, it really is. Half asleep, shaving half asleep is a big, big no no. <laughs> um, but yeah, just I think kind of I just I was like maybe I should just go under the neck and leave up top, but it grows so fast it'll be back by Friday. A nice shadow will actually by later tonight actually. Nice, Pretty same. Fast. No, just kidding. Nice. Yeah, I was gonna say <laughs> what razor do you use? Um, is that? Uh, when you said you started watching the um, the pimple popping things, I wanted to ask like when you were a kid, did you ever have what was your thing? Maybe that because I feel like all comedians had something that was whether it was an insecurity or something that was like the uh, the focal point of maybe some teasing or like what was your thing? Was acne ever an issue or was it no, being shy? It wasn't acne. Was it? It was. I have big teeth. Yeah. And big feet. You got teeth for having big feet. Big feet and big teeth, yes. So both. Kids but, were like, this is a combo yeah. pack. Because I have size eight feet. I'm only 5'3", and yeah. I have size eight. So typically for woman, that's no. for like 5'6", yeah. range, right? Um, so I'm 5'3", I'm I have size eight feet, but I've had size eight feet since like sixth grade. So I've had big old feet forever, <laughs> and I have big teeth. Mm. And I remember my mom used to try to comfort me about my big teeth, and she would be like, Julia Roberts has big teeth. Great, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did that work? <laughs> I don't know, maybe, yeah. but it's like who's Julia Roberts? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The, those types of things, you uh, kids also get crafty with their teasing. Like, oh, there's yeah. no reason to be teased for having big teeth or big feet. But, but they do ki- it. Kids just find the things to like Anything. cut to your core. Yeah. I remember, there's a kid he used to make fun of me for being a fat kid, and I, he just wore really tight sweatpants, and so I would just call him tight pants. It fucking drove him crazy. <laughs> I just said what fucking that his pants were a little too snug and he couldn't handle it. <laughs> but it was just like the I don't know, maybe it was just calling out what was uh what was happening. Would you find yourself um you know, uh with comebacks? Would you kind of uh Um so I wasn't real good at like comebacks, yeah. but I was I had a temper. I okay. would say I'm going to fight you is what it was. Gotcha. I rarely would ever fight, but I would talk real tough. Right. Real, real tough game. But I was very athletic. And so I would. You said tomboy. Yes. I would um, race boys. Oh, my God. Like if people tried to like. Not for make like you have a crush on them because you're like. No. This is purely for the sport aspect. They, like they're trying to make fun of me or they're trying whatever. Be like, Let's go race. Let's do that then. Oh my God, let's, let's sell it on the tracks. That's oh, yeah. so fucking and 90s, I was so like Latino fast. movie of you. I, very, yeah. Right? Uh, and I was so good. I was fast. I was like, I would beat all the boys. I, are you kidding me? Smoked. Just don't even, what are you thinking? Um, and by the way, that's a, you're taking a little bit of the man card from y- like, because yeah. kid, boys want to all be. And I guess that was my comeback fast. and not yeah. knowing it. Like I didn't have the words to say, but I was like, let's just, let me beat you. Come on, we're here. Yeah. Come on. That, phys- like taking them out of their element, I feel like with yeah. that is does more damage, I feel like. Yeah, yeah. Because that... it's like, you got beat by a girl when that was a fucking uh-huh. thing. Right, right, right. And did you ever play, I, they called it different games at different schools, yeah. but we called it Socket or Foursquare. Yeah, soak them for us. Okay, where you like, there's a, there's a line in the middle yes, and you two hit Two sides. Ball. Yes, yeah. and you could do like skimmers. Yep. Oh man, I, think, I would crush yeah. the boys in that one. For real? Skimmers all day, bro. Oh man, <laughs> that's so dope. Wait, so, um, okay, so, so when you uh, start to find that comedy is like gonna be your thing, uh-huh. uh, was there like a light bulb moment or was it just like a collection of people being like, all right, this is, like you said, you were a class clown, right? Kind of mm-hmm. like you were deemed that. So yeah. people around you started to kind of know like, all right. And people kind of just assume yeah. like Angel's going to be doing something in entertainment. And does, how many people, I guess, come to you with the 
I'm going to see you on this. I'm going to blah, blah, blah. You're going to be the next out of to where it like it starts to maybe, you know, set some off in your brain where you're like, oh, maybe I can do this or I want to do this now more because people are starting to let me know that they think it's possible. So the teacher that I talk about in my book, that was my senior year in high school. Mm. I didn't really have anybody before that be like, oh, you're going to be entertainment or anything like that. Um, I because, again, I was like trying to be a chola. I was trying to be tough. Like I wasn't I. I wasn't trying to be an actress or a comedian. Yeah. I was just funny. Yeah. So that wasn't really like a thing that I could be. Right. In the back of my mind, I was like, I want to be an actress one day. But I would never say that out loud because I was ashamed. I was embarrassed, you know. But I wasn't like actively trying to go audition for this play or anything like that or join community theater. Never. Anything. My senior year, I went to the drama class. I wasn't even in the class. I just went and hung out, right? And then I kind of like joined them for a couple of their little games and exercises. And I remember the teacher being like, you should come try out for the play. And I was like, oh, but I have cheerleading practice. Like, I don't know if I could even do both. She's yeah. like, well, I didn't say you would book it. I was just saying you should come try out. Whoa. And I was like, oh, I'm good. <laughs> I'm a cheerleader. I don't need this. Yeah. Um. So I, I didn't like have this performer like, oh, she's going to be somebody. But like that teacher who was like, you're going to be on SNL one day. I wasn't even an acting class yet I wasn't anything so her saying that I was like oh okay that's funny that's weird and then the only other time is my grandma uh before she passed away I think I was maybe 19 or 18 I don't know I was out of high school but I hadn't done anything yeah. yet and she used to watch her telenovelas her Mexican game shows where it's just like loud colors Mexican noises like phenomenal. Yeah, so she would watch those all the time and she would be in her, her little rocking chair pulled up real close to the TV and she would like lean forward and just like watch her shows. And um, I remember one day I walked into her room and she's watching her like game show and um, I remember her turning to me and saying, I could see you doing that one day. Whoa. And I was just like, Okay. She, she meant like acting on one of the tele like, not yeah. like winning a dishwasher on a right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like being on TV. Wow. And I I remember being like, huh, okay. Uh, you know, like people could see it, but I wasn't actively trying to like be anything mm. yet. And it wasn't until um I was in junior college and I had a friend who I ran into and she was like, Hey, guess what? I'm a cheerleader for the Oakland Raiders. You should come try out. And I was like, no, that's not really my jam. Um, like, I do competitive cheerleading with stunts and tumbling. Raiderettes was, like, pretty shake your pom-poms, do, like, turns and stuff. And I'm like, oh, that's not really my jam. Then I had another friend who she had moved from San Jose to L.A. And she was in the entertainment industry. She had been in, like, a Ross commercial and an in sync video. And I was like, oh, my God, I know somebody famous. This is crazy. And I remember talking to her being like, hey, I would want to do what you're doing one day. Like, she was, like, the only person that I actually told, like, hey, I, I kind of want to do what you're yeah, doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she was like, well, if you ever move down here, I'll help you get started. And I'll help show you the ropes. And then it was like, huh, this is actually, like, a thing that I could – pursue yeah like, you need to know somebody that's kind of tied to it to right. make it feel possible like because other than that it's just a fantasy in my brain it's mm. not a real dream to yep. actually go for it's just yep. a fantasy yep. so at this point then i'm like you know what i'm i'm going to try out for the oakland raiders and if i make the raiderettes i'm going to do it for one year i'm going to use that as my sign to pursue the entertainment industry and if i don't make the squad then i won't do it and i'll i'll just find something else to do so i tried out Long story short, made the squad, went to the Super Bowl that year, came home from the Super Bowl the very next weekend, packed my bags, moved to L.A., and I started from the ground up as an extra and just kind of worked my way up. So I still had no idea that I was, like, funny to be a comedian or anything like that. I was trying to be an actress. So I started as an extra. And On I, Friends. On Friends. Best show. Are you kidding me? That was a great part of the – the way you just set that up and broke that down was really uh, – that's an – I think that's chapter – Two maybe of who yeah. do I think I am available yeah. now everywhere in bookstores and yes. audio. Yes, is there a, a favorite place you like to pimp people out to go get it, or just wherever books wherever, are sold? Wherever, wherever you like to get books, yeah, it'll be there. I highly recommend the audio version. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I worked really hard on that. <laughs> hours, <laughs> I'm assuming. A lot of hours. I have many questions about that, but wait. So tell me, the friends extra thing was like your 
holy oh, shit like man. i'm on a set you're on the biggest show arguably of all time uh-huh uh yep and in its prime right yep I seasons mean, nine and ten wow so I moved to LA and my friend, this is also from the book, but I'll give you just a recap story of it. My friend who was like, I'll help you get started. She kept her word and she told me what to do and had me go sign up um, to be an extra at Central Casting. I don't know. Did you ever be an extra? Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So you know it's how It's a world and a half. Oh, yeah. Where there are legends. Oh, yeah. There are people that have been lifers. Yeah. That are just like, you think Julia Roberts has big yeah. teeth. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I used to work with, uh, I don't know if you heard of uh, Kate Blank. Like, and they're just like, like yeah, it was, on, uh, it was in Tombstone. And they're, they were in these movies. They weren't uh -huh. just working on set. They were in, yeah. they speak like these guys, they know when the craft uh -huh. service, like the good cheese is coming out. Like they're fucking like, you know what I'm saying? They hold court, kids go to them and they're just like, yeah, that's a fucking, it's why there was a sh Ricky Gervais show about those people because it's yeah. such a, some of them, you know, just come and go and you're like, all right, this is just a gig. And then mm -hmm. some just get, stuck in it and they're like i'm gonna be yeah. king of the castle in this world yeah it's a whole world it's a whole world so she sent me to the slaughter she was like yeah. go to central casting cattle and go sign up and there's gonna be a line of people out the door ready to sign up to be an extra but i don't want you to wait in line just go to the front window ask for a guy named sam give him your raider at headshot and a tray of cookies and tell him you're new to town and you want to be an extra. give him a tray of cookies yeah Give him a tray of cookies, like real sleazy. This is the casting couch that I've been hearing about. You know what I mean? I'm like, what the hell? She's like, yeah, and make sure they're not funfetti. What the hell does funfetti mean? Does that mean like I'm down for anything? Definitely not getting no funfetti. What is funfetti? Is it a type of cookie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just with like the confetti. Oh, okay, gotcha. In it, you know? I did, yeah, I didn't also know if it was like some sort of casting couch euphemism. That's what I'm saying. Cookie bribery is a real thing. In fourth grade, real quick, I ran for treasure, uh, student council vice president president fifth grade and the girl caitlin peck who i ran against in our class it was the primaries before we went to the all school i handed out cookies as i was at, caitlin gave her speech and i just go well that was a great speech caitlin and we appreciate uh, everything that you've put together you and then so i opened much. i opened fucking keebler elves cookies the m m's one i walked around to everyone's desk and i go now uh there's a lot going on this year enjoy your cookie uh there's a lot going on this year that we all and i just went around one one cookie in front of each person and my buddies were all laughing i was doing it obviously as like a goof uh -huh. but also as a clear like oh i'm fucking winning this thing yeah and i won and caitlin <laughs> threw a big fit and goes you guys just voted for adam just because he gave you cookies and nobody really disputed that but i didn't fucking care yeah watch and learn caitlin very trumpy of me <laughs> um did you like your cookie <laughs> and so uh so, um, okay, so you gave out cookies, and then you said, yeah. here's my headshot. Yeah. Wide-eyed. Were you just so pumped? You had that fucking new-to-town look, I'm sure, Oh, right? yeah. Well, so here's the thing. This is Matt fresh off the Super Bowl. The Raiders were just in the Super Bowl. Whoa. I, oh, so you're coming from doing cool shit. Oh, I was just off the Super Bowl, right? A few weeks ago was just the Super Bowl. So I go to this place. Central Casting, I knock on the window. I'm like, yeah, I'm here for Sam. She's like, okay, he'll be right out. And I have my sleazy cookies like everybody knows. Like I'm like whoring myself out with these cookies. Here comes this guy walking from the back office. He comes out and he's wearing a Raiders hat. And he's like, hey, I'm Sam. What's up? And I'm like, oh, this is for you. And I give him my Raiderette headshot. And he's like, Raiders? No way, you're a Raiderette? Oh my God. And he starts talking Super Bowl stuff. I'm like, yeah, I was just there like all the things and he's like all right i'm gonna get you signed up don't even worry about it he calls me like two days later and he's like hey you want to be an extra on friends and i was like on friends you mean like my favorite show of all time it is current number one show on television yeah 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 i want to do that thank you and that was my first job and still to this day probably my favorite job i've ever had no way oh by far hey guys adam ray here for the about last night podcast and i'm sitting down because I got some big news. Usually I'm standing up to do comedy, but I'm sitting down now because I got the deal of a lifetime. First of all, sitting is bad for you. We all know that, whether we're sitting on planes or sitting on a beanbag chair watching porn in front of our kids, there's just too much damage you do on the body. Thankfully, Axion has come up with a chair that allows your pelvis to move the way it does while you walk. So all 33 vertebrae align into perfect posture. The result? Better breathing, better blood flow, and relief from the pain. It's crazy what you can do when you set your body to do it. Now, these guys are homies of mine. My buddy Dennis uh, worked with the Clippers as their doctor for 27 years. He runs a wellness center called Peak Wellness. He's a fucking gangster and has uh, saved me from surgery numerous times. 
Uh, I actually met Justin Bieber at his place. Um, and uh, and I was in my boxers getting cupping done. And Bieber and I locked eyes. And I was like, this is how we were supposed to meet. And Bieber smiled, and I never saw him again. Um, but uh, this chair is a game changer. It's changed the way I live. It's changed the way I breathe, the way I sit. And you guys right now can get that chair for 25% off uh, using the promo code ALN25 at all33.com. Go to all33.com and use promo code ALN25 for 25% off this chair. It's incredible. You got to get it. It's the only chair out there to get. We will be getting them for the studio, but don't take my word for it. Check out this video. At All33, we've always pushed to reimagine the way we work. That's why we designed our revolutionary sit-in-motion technology to help people perform and feel their best. Then all of a sudden, the whole world was free to rethink how we work and especially where we work. And as Americans came home, so did we. We approached the design of our chairs with a person and planet first mindset. That's why we chose to build them here in the United States. Manufacturing in the U.S. means we're able to have eyes on every step of the process. From material sourcing, to part production, to testing, even shipping. And we're able to recycle materials, use less energy, and reduce our carbon footprint. We've built the healthiest chairs you will ever sit in to keep you and the world moving. Because movement makes things happen. I don't think people realize that like being on a set, how exciting it is, and especially a show where you're like the energy. I mean, I went to one taping when I was in uh, college 2001 here um, in LA, and I don't remember what season that was, 2001. I think shortly towards the end as well, maybe. Mm -hmm. I wonder if it was your episode. And so the energy in that uh, studio was crazy. Even the audience warm-up guy. Oh, yeah. I mean, we were there for probably five and a half hours. Yeah. And by the end, it was like, how many more fucking dance competitions can we see right, between right, right, two right. milfs from Rancho Cucamonga? <laughs> and like, how many more granola bars can we fucking eat? But uh -huh. everybody was like, nobody was bummed about it. No. Because like Jennifer Aniston would slip up and mm -hmm. we get to see some bloopers or uh -huh. like Joey would like, you know, pull somebody out of the crowd and do a how you doing uh -huh, and everyone uh -huh. would freak out. Yeah. And like, there's truly probably a handful of shows that have that type of energy. What a blessing that I got to be a part of this show. And you fed off it. Oh my God. It got you so inspired? Uh, so as soon as I walk, I remember my first day driving there to the set. You drive and you park across the street. You don't even get to park in the lot. You gotta park across the street in that lot over there. And then I remember walking through Warner Brothers lot and just kind of dreaming. And I think that's what makes it one of my favorite jobs is I wasn't jaded yet. And um, I was like, anything's possible. I was such a dreamer. So I'd be walking through Warner Brothers lot, just looking and being like, oh my gosh, like here's a soundstage for this show, for that show. And like the tour trams would drive by me and I'd be like, oh, I wonder if they think I'm somebody. I wonder if they think I'm like somebody successful or famous. And then getting to the actual soundstage and walking on the set, the smell of a soundstage is very specific and it's very nostalgic for me. If I smell the set of a soundstage, it's just, Something about it is very magical. And I remember walking onto the set and seeing the boys' apartment, seeing the coffee shop, seeing the girls' apartment, and being like, wow, this, I can't believe I'm actually here making movie magic for TV. Like, this is crazy. And um, it was an incredible experience. And I got my SAG card and I made friends with the second AD on the show. He was very funny. I was funny. We just kept making each other laugh. And he's like, okay, I'm going to bring you back tomorrow. Okay, I'm going to bring you back next week. Okay, I'll bring you back next week. And then next thing you know, I was there for season nine and 10. Wow. Mm -hmm. Holy shit. Um, did you get to meet, did anybody give you any advice while you were there? Did you get to like pick anybody's brain? That, no advice, no. Yeah. Uh, but I definitely got to converse with the cast, but yeah. I, I would never start a conversation. Yeah. I would only speak when spoken to, gotcha. that kind of thing. That's kind of your approach. That was my rule. Yeah. And I was just like, if they say something to me, I will reply back. Don't overdo it. And you would see people try to talk to the cast and then immediately AD's like, nope, move her Oof. over there. I was like, no, I'm never gonna be that one. And I think the reason why 
the cast would talk to me every now and then is because they knew I wasn't hungry mm. for it. I wasn't trying to get their attention. Yeah. And so I was a safe person to interact with yeah. because I wouldn't try to talk their ear off they afterwards. They almost confide in you. <laughs> I don't know about confiding me, but they'd be <laughs> they'd be like, this guy won't shut the fuck about, uh, about working with I'd Julia like, yeah, Roberts. This yeah. guy, right? Yeah, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Uh, do you kind of have that approach with like fans now? Is it like, do you kind of, or are your fans so uh, rabid that it's, Rabbit's the right word, right? Rampant? Rabid. What's the I word? I think it's rabid. Rabid, right? I think. Like enthused, overly like. I think it's rabid. Get a fact check on this? Because rampant is not that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> we'll edit this out. Um, what, what, say it again? It is rabid, right? Crazy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do your, um, your fans seem like the fucking diehard, right? I have really great fans. Yeah. But they're and, not. They're not. But they can wild. read the room, yeah. So they're not like showing for the like, most part. Yes, showing up to your house with like cookie baskets. Oh, thank God. Yeah. No, no, no. They they can read the room for the most part. Every now and then you have a few that you're like, hey, let's, yeah. let's settle. Let's somebody help me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. Every now because you then. do meet and greets. Oh my God! At my show this weekend, never happened. Dead. This will happen. Please. I'm on stage, in the middle of my set. This lady walks right up to the front. Pulls her phone out mm -hmm. to take a selfie with me during my set mm -hmm. and just takes a selfie. And I'm like, are you kidding me? And then she turns into a video and she goes, say hi. Hi, say hi. During my set at a big, huge theater at the Grove of Anaheim. Holy shit. I was now, is that just to make you irate or do you respect the moxie to do that? Is it like a little oh, of both? No. It's like, oh, I, I am livid inside. Psycho, yeah. However, I know the second I show that I'm livid, yeah. I just lost the whole room. Yeah. You so gotta now, use it. Include the distraction to squash it, right? Oh, so now I'm trying to think of like, how can I um, handle the situation, keep it lighthearted, but let it be serious. And so I, I go, oh, here, give me your phone. I'll take the picture. And I take her phone and I just hand it to a security guard and I go, she'll give it to you after the show unless they don't kick you out or whatever. And it was a whole thing. But then it, I was so livid. I was like, how do I come back from this like what do I do to like get a laugh I, I can't just move on to my joke I have to acknowledge this and which you're so good at crowd work you're so good at improvising you're so good at like all the things that like happen in the moment and you have something so quick for me I'm like like I said words are not my 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 strength like mm -hmm. I can't go race the lady outside yeah. right now you know <laughs> what I mean? let's I'll take it to the track <laughs> right, woman right. so I'm like you okay should, though. here here what am I gonna say and I I just, I made fun of a guy that I made fun of earlier and I was like, I would expect that from him, but not from her. And then it was, it was just a real quick laugh that everybody got what I was saying. And then I just moved on from there. Cause I was like, I don't trust myself to keep going. Cause I, I don't know if I'm just going to get angry hearing myself talk about what this woman did. Let me just move on. Wow. Fucking people. But I guess that's par for the uh, course, right? You create this empire that you have created. Who does that though? The entitlement. Yeah, well, in the middle of a show, there'll be no shortage of people that think that, uh, you know, that the night should be like they want their moment too. She wanted her moment with you, and she Ugh. fucking got it. Ugh. Who was on the receiving end of that phone that she was FaceTiming? And she was taking a video. Oh, she's taking a video. Mm -hmm. Wow, awful. But so for the most part, you avoid these types of occurrences at your shows. Yeah, yeah. I mean, people just come out to laugh. People come out to have a good time. My, fa I get that compliment a lot from clubs and venues. Like you have really great fans. Like they come out, they drink, and they have a good time. Like they don't get wasted. They don't like they're they're not super rowdy. Like they're just coming to have a good time. So I'm very lucky. I have a good crowd. How how has the uh, book been received by your um, friends, fans, and all that? Great. Yeah. Um, I had a couple people. One girl in particular, who um. She mess. I haven't talked to her in years, but she messaged me about this one part in my book. She's like, "Hey, are you talking about me in this chapter?" Oh shit! Were you? <laughs> I was not. Oh. However, when she brought it up, I have to tell you the story now. Yeah, because so, you do these deep. I mean, it's this is this is what writing a book is. Is you're yeah. if you're gonna do it, and it's gonna be who do you think I am? Right, that's the title again. Right. Who do I think I am? Who do I think I am? Uh -huh. I mean, you're, this is your, I mean, you're laying yeah. out, this is how I got to where I am. Yeah. So you're gonna be hitting some highlights and featuring some, you know, some guest stars from the yeah. show called Angela's Life. Exactly, Yeah. exactly. So a lot of people get mentioned, some by real name, some by 
not. Yeah. And uh, this one particular situation, I was living with my cousin Joe, and um, I had a friend come visit me, but she stayed in his room all weekend. So I was mm. like, oh, I guess she came to visit him because mm. he was a little hoe. Joe was a hoe. And he would hook up with everybody. Anytime I had a friend, he'd try and hook up with them. So, oh my God, what you just reminded me with that voice real quick was the voice of your, which is one of my favorite Curb Your Enthusiasm episodes of all time, your episode, where oh. you come out eating popcorn, <laughs> and Larry's trying to hook up with the uh, with your um, uh, my aunt, aunt. your yeah. aunt, yeah. and you're coming out, and yeah, and you're eating popcorn, and then Larry's just like, hey, what, what are you doing? We're making out. You're like, yeah. it didn't really sound like it. Yeah. Like, you're usually, you're, there's a lot of talking. Yeah. And then you walked away, and you're like, all right, have fun talking. Bye. <laughs> you were so great. <laughs> Thank it was you. before I knew you, and I was like, "Whoa, what? You just came in and crushed." Thank you. In that show, just in and out, boom, got laughs, funny, and it was like, Thanks. I was like, "Oh, I could see that character popping up in the show again." Thank anyway, you. keep going. They did not see that. that character popping yeah. up in the show. Again. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. <laughs> I want and done. Yeah. Um. So, uh, what was I talking about? Oh, the um, uh, Joe the Ho. Oh yeah. So my cousin Joe, he'd be hooking up all my friends, yeah. and so this one girl came, and I mentioned, but she stayed with my cousin the whole time. Blah blah blah. So I guess she came to visit him and not me, whatever. And so she's like, "Were you talking about me?" And I actually wasn't. I was talking about a different girl. Okay. And um, but when she started, she's like giving me her side of the story. She's like, "He he asked me to stay in his room." This is like twenty over this is about 20 years now he asked me to stay in his room blah 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 and giving me like her spiel and i was like i'm not even talking about you like joe did that a lot okay but then i call my cousin joe and i'm like i feel like my memory is playing tricks on me am i talking about her like i couldn't remember all yeah. my stories and he was like oh no no i never hooked up with her to, you know, it's like okay, thank God. Whew, oh, thank definitely God. not talking about her. Oh my God! But yeah, so I I would get like you know phone calls like that. Are you talking about me? Or like, hey, when you mentioned this, like, who did you mean in that? And I'm like, Oop. yeah, I guess you do have to consider that if you're gonna. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I wrote a chapter about my dad, and I sent him the chapter before I published it. Whoa, how come? Because I'm very honest in it, and just talking about a lot of trauma that I experienced growing up. And um, I I wanted him to read it because if he was not okay with it, I wouldn't have published it. I right. didn't need to get it out that bad. It was not like... It was imperative to the story. No. Yeah. I mean, it's helpful. And I've gotten a lot of messages from people thanking me for sharing those parts and them feeling seen in my story and whatnot. Um, but I definitely sent it to him and was, and I did the therapy sandwich, you know, the positive, negative, positive. I was yeah. like, dad, I'm so glad you're my dad. Like, thank you so much for all you've done for me. There was some traumatic things, blah, blah, blah. But I am who I am today because of you. Thank you so much. And here's my chapter. And then he never responded to my chapter. He never re replied to me or anything. Oh, he just kind of like made a joke about it. And I heard about the joke via somebody else. Like he was... It was his way of saying that he's okay with it, I guess, like by just making a joke and saying it to my aunt to tell me, right? I'm like, okay, well, he's fine with it, so I'm going to publish it. And then my book came out, and my dad didn't even acknowledge it. He, I didn't get any phone call, any text, message, like, hey, congrats, you're an author, you wrote a book, nothing, which is what I talk about in the chapter, <laughs> you know, just all of our relationship and the lack of all kinds of stuff. Did that, wow. So that's in the later chapters, yeah? Yeah, I yeah. haven't gotten to yet. Is that tough to know? First of all, what compels you to write a book? How much life do you think anyone needs to live before they should feel like that a book is the next move? Anybody can yeah. write a book if you have a story to tell. Gotcha. So I- Did you hit a point where you were like, all right, there's enough going on, or like, did somebody come to you and kind of go, hey, I know you pretty well. I know there's a lot of things that people could probably benefit from hearing from someone who's, uh, you know, created- quite a life for themselves when i first started doing stand-up i would also sometimes speak at like women's conferences and girls conferences and just share my story with them and at this point i haven't really done a whole lot in my i'm a stand-up i'm a touring comedian but i'm not like an a-list actor or anything like that right but i would speak at girls conferences women's conferences and i would share my story of how i grew up and how i got to where i am today and people would be very inspired by the story. And so I would clock it and say, okay, one day I'm gonna write this in a book. I'll write a book one day. And so I started a document on my computer about 10 years ago. And I was like, okay, if I wrote a book, these are stories I would tell. These are chapters I would have. And I started writing this like 10 years ago. And you know in stand-up, we, we gotta cut the fat. You wanna get your punchline, quick. 
right? Take out some details, get to your punchline. But I had some stories that every detail was worth it and helped paint the picture of where I was. And I would try it on stage and it wouldn't work on stage. And I'd be like, you know what? I'm going to save this for a book one day. Mm. It's not, it doesn't work on stage. Some stories are just not for. They're conversational and they're not like, you know, you got to get your punchlines in. Mm. Like, but some of them are not. I got to take you on a journey. This one's emotional. I'm going to take you here and then you're going to cry and then you're going to laugh and all of that. Now, did you have a thought that was like, oh, maybe one woman show? Like, I did. Yeah. Yeah, I did. I have thought about that. And uh, I remember seeing Mike Tyson's one man show shit was great. on Broadway. It was fantastic. And I, after seeing his one man show, I was like, I would love to do that one day. And I mean, John Linguizamo as well. Fantastic. But something about watching Mike Tyson, I guess it was like, if he could do it, I could do it. Fuck yeah. Did he talk about biting the ear? Was there a ch- point when he was like, oh, I remember tasting the ear and I was like, this is probably the, ba- this was a, ba- this was a bad idea. I should have just talked to him about how I felt about it. Yeah. <laughs> Was his performing great? Was he just like... He was very entertaining. Wow, engaging as shit, huh? Yeah, he was entertaining. Good for him. And heartfelt. It was real. Wow. And I think that's what what really inspired me is is because I know I'm more than just funny, Mm. but I'm actually a very deep person. And I, I love to have real conversations with people. Anytime I have like a schmoozy surface level conversation because you're networking, you're at an event, I, I can't. I, I can only last a few minutes and I'm like, I don't, I don't know how to do this. Like I can only have like real deep conversations or n- none. But um, so anyways, I remember seeing him and there were like heartfelt moments and I'm like, I have heartfelt moments that I want to share on stage, but I can't because I do stand up comedy where I'm supposed to make people laugh, not cry. But if I did a one man show, then I could do all of those things. So I definitely thought about it. But the book was the first step. Um, and yeah, so I I shared all those stories in my book. And I started writing this document 10 years ago. And it was during 2020 COVID. So I guess that is the one thing that I did start working on was my book in, in COVID. And my agent called me and was like, hey, I think it's time for you to write a book. And it just kind of felt right in my spirit. And I was like, yeah, I think now is the time to tell my story. So let's start working on that. Uh, the title, where does that come from? Who Do I Think I Am yeah. is stories of self-identity, growing up Mexican and American, but I didn't speak Spanish. I wanted to be a chola real bad, but nobody was scared of little Payasa Johnson, so that didn't have the same ring to it. And then Who Do I Think I Am is also, who do I think I am to dream such big dreams and go for them? So mm-hmm. it's also stories of me chasing my dreams and how I got to where I am today. Yeah, it's. Uh, I think we all do a pretty good job of not, looking back and just kind of especially in this business right and probably in all aspects of any job in life where just people are so all right what's next i'm looking ahead i right, mm-hmm. did that and, and then you get to a point i'm sure you can attest to this as well where you've kind of uh created certain expectations for yourself and you're like mm-hmm. all right well of course i did that yeah i because i told myself i was going to do that or i just i've done a handful of things in that similar world that that wasn't that big of a deal like shooting a special i just did a special so I'm, of course i'm gonna do another one and there's yeah. people that are gonna want it right. but you know to actually go oh wow i still fucking went out built a whole new hour had people yeah. dig it had people come out and see it and now people want to buy it and put it on like you know to skip over those uh just the the uh the process along the way and to not like i think we uh we we don't take enough time to truly like go oh wow i started from here yeah. and now i'm here yeah i mean when i saw seinfeld's comedian documentary i think in like maybe 1999 or something that was the first time i was like oh he goes to comedy clubs like i just assumed he did seinfeld and then was like a big or didn't even really stop to think right, about how right. he got to where he was but it's like oh yeah even that pi- i watched this pixar documentary a little while ago and it was like oh yeah i just assumed like Somebody came in with a fucking toy and was like, Tom Hanks is going to do this. And they're like, fucking make 10 of them. But it was like, no, the Pixar studio, like the whole creation of that was like started from scratch yeah. and w- had a lot of ups and downs. And yeah. and um, yeah, it's just bonkers to, to really, and I'm sure that was kind of crazy to really sit down and go, right? Did you ever get like overwhelmed uh, with like- All the time. All the time, yeah. All the time. I think it's really important to pause and reflect on your life and what you've accomplished, whether it was an actual goal you set out to accomplish or it was just an added blessing that you had no idea this was gonna be a part of your life's journey, but it is. I think it's really important to pause and look back because um, 
it inspires you for the future. You remind yourself when you start doubting yourself, your creativity, your um, you start comparing yourself to your peers, you start comparing yourself to whatever you see online, on social media, while you're scrolling, like whatever it is. And why am I not there yet? Shouldn't I be there by yeah. now? Shouldn't I do this? Like when you start getting in that mode, it's easy to start doubting that you will continue progressing. It's easy to start doubting that there's more for you. You can start thinking like, oh, maybe I've, this is it. This is where I plateau. This is the end for me. Maybe this is mm. it. Maybe it's just kind of like mediocre from here. Maybe it's, you can start getting into those things, right? But then when you pause and you look back at all the things that you've accomplished, at from selling out a show to um, booking an audition that you actually auditioned for to getting an offer for one, like, all the different things that you have done in your career, the people that you've worked with, um, having your podcast, like moving from the house to the studio, like yeah. little things, yeah. but they're not little things. They're progression. They're part of your story. And when we start doubting ourselves, we start talking to ourselves the way those trolls are talking to us on TikTok, you know, then that's when it's time to pause and be like, hold on, let me just look back uh, the amazing journey that I have been on and remind myself that I am talented. I'm a beast. I have so much more to offer. I didn't know I was going to come up with this Bonquiqui character, but yeah. it did. And then it blew up. I didn't know I was going to write this nail salon joke in a joke writing class at a church, but I did. Wow. And it blew up. Had no idea that was going to happen. So I have no idea what tomorrow holds, what a few months from now holds, what next year is gonna look like. I can have goals, but I have no idea what's in store. I just have to believe it's gonna be amazing. Why wouldn't I? Look at the past. Is that in the book, all the bunk week we, uh, yeah. is that a whole chat? Yeah, 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 yeah. And I know you've um, you know, told that versions of that story, but that I'm, I assume that that was gonna be in there because I feel like that's a, uh, a pretty instrumental yeah. time in your life. Crazy. Uh, did you? You did it on the Mad TV reboot that we, uh -huh. did, yeah, 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 yeah. How was that for you to do? Um, there it is. <laughs> we <laughs> said it all by not saying anything. Um, a little nerve wracking, a yeah. little like, um, it had been a lot of years, so I was excited that the character had been received so well. Yeah, but a lot of time had gone by mm. already. And it's not like I was like, for instance, um, Stuart, who had a bunch of sketches yeah. to go back to. Oh, I love the one um, sketch of Stuart when he did this. Oh, I love the one when Stuart right, did this. Right, I right. had one sketch. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. people love it, but I wasn't like really like interwoven into the show, into the fabric of Mad TV, because at that point I was interwoven into the fabric of YouTube. YouTube is what popped it off. So people didn't even know it was a mad TV sketch at first. They were yeah. just like, oh, this is funny. Yeah. So I wish like I had like a tighter relationship with all the people involved. And But I was on the show for four episodes. Wow. That's it. And you wrote the Bunk Quickly yes. sketch? Yeah. And it got on right away? Yeah. So it was right when the writer's strike was happening. <sighs> and so all the writers were, like pumping out scripts for like, all the actors that they know how to write for. I was brand new to the show. So I was playing like detective number one in this sketch and I yeah. would have like a You gotta line. earn your stripes when you're new on the show, Exactly. Right? Yeah. So um, they were very generous and they let us write our own stuff. And so I wrote this Bonquiqui sketch and- Based we, on? We read it at the round table. Yeah, based, so Bonquiqui is a mix of a lot of people I've met throughout my life, but two people in particular. One is the girl I went through a Burger King drive through in Memphis, Tennessee years ago, and she changed my life. <laughs> um, and then the the main influence of Bonquiqui is my brother, uh, who at the time was not sober. So he had no filter. He would say whatever he wanted. And it was usually what people were thinking, but would never say out loud. He oh, was that guy. He whoa. would say it. Ahead and of he, his time. Oh, and he would say it in a funny way. Cool. Oh, he's making people laugh. Oh, he's hilarious. Yeah. And he's a trendsetter. Like he starts laughing a certain way. Then all of his friend circle starts laughing the way he laughs. Whoa. He's, he is, a, he is Bonquiqui. 
like that's who she is. She comes up with a new catchphrase, like already or whatever. Bye, whatever she does. That's my brother. My wow. brother was that guy. He would come up with a catchphrase and everyone would do it. He he started this thing where he would just laugh and everyone would do his laugh, but it was like a sarcastic little like if you were saying something he'd go <laughs> 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 oh man and then all his co-workers everybody is like they'd see each other and go mm -hmm. and it's just a thing he would just start doing a thing and then everybody does a thing people love to just like i don't know imitate like yeah. it's a form of flattery but it's yeah. like it's a fun like especially if it's a underground like you know grassroots cult type thing to be like this is a funny thing that we all do and we're the only ones that do it yeah because we know the person that does it whoa so I mean, write what you know is what they say, right? right? And so you truly were just, so once you started to kind of put pen to uh, pad, you were like, oh, I just fucking just need to think and remember things yeah. he said and Everything he would say, him. I would put into her mouth. Wow. Period. So like I created the character, but it was really my brother. Um, he is the character. Um, the sketch as well. And so I wrote the sketch and we, we do it at the, the table reading. Yeah. There's like a whole binder of yeah. sketches and we're reading through all of them and you cast them. So you're like, hey, can you read this part? And can you read this part? And you read this part? Okay, great. And so you cast them. And so we're all sitting around the table and we're reading the parts that we're cast for at the table read. And from that, they pick which sketch is going to go into the episode. And so they picked my sketch to go into the next episode. And I was like, oh my gosh. And um, that was like the one sketch that I got to do. And then the writer strike came and I was done. There was budget cuts. And by budget cuts, I mean me. I was done with the show. Wow. But then you were like, I'm going to still do this character. This was fun. So that was my husband's idea because my husband's in music. Mm. And in the sketch, Bone Quick Wee does a rap song on the microphone to put the orders in oh to the back God, kitchen yes. at King Burger. And so she'd on the mic is the queen. I listen to me sing. Uh, and so people would come to my shows and they would want me to do that song or they would do the song or they have shirts that have the song lyrics on it. What the fuck? So people love the song. And so my husband is like, we should write a real song for you to do and film a music video and put it on YouTube. And so that's what we did. And it did well. So we're like, let's do a few more songs. So we did three songs and then he pitched it to his record label and then they bought it. And so one quick, we got signed to Warner music and we did a full album <laughs> that's right so we did a full album as bon quick we we toured as bon quick we for two tours yes it was incredible we were out there with like, stand up it was it's different completely different i got to do both though because i started the show as myself as angela and i would do like 10 minutes 15 minutes Brilliant. of the hitter jokes the nail salon obviously um the raiderette joke like a, a bunch of jokes that people love like the yeah, greatest the hits, hits, right? Wait, was it advertised that they were going to get you too, or was it? So it was um, Bon Quiqui. It's Angela Johnson presents Bon Quiqui gotcha. live in concert, but people don't read what they're buying, and so a lot of people <sighs> thought they were coming just to a stand-up show, and they had no idea it was a music show. <laughs> oh, whoa! So there was a lot of confusion that we had sure. dealt with on the tour, and I'm sure there was a lot of people disappointed. Like I thought we we're coming to a stand-up show. Yeah. Like what is this? Hip hop music, whatever it is. Um, so I started. I did my 15 mu minutes of my stand-up, and then I would go backstage and I would get into my wardrobe, my hair and makeup, and like all of that. Mm. And then um, Mal Hall would come out, yep, and he would Mal. do. Uh, like 10, 15 minute set. That's all we need. And then. Um, no, that's all we need from you. Yeah, Keep thank going. you. Yeah, thank you so much. And no, then no, my husband and his band would come on stage and my husband would do like three songs, some covers, getting them in, in the mood for music, right? And then my husband would exit the stage, the band would stay on the stage and then I would enter. And then the rest of the show was me doing my music from my album that I had put out. Pyrotechnics, are you coming out to a Oh big my God, we had LED walls, like lighting rigs, confetti cannons, like it Holy was nuts. Shit. It was nuts. Holy shit. That is, uh, every comedian wants to be a rock star. Right. And um, they say every rock star wants to be a comedian. Yeah. <laughs> so you got to do both. What a blessing. Yeah, fucking crazy. Unreal. Um, all right, so there's a chapter on that in the book as well, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and the book again, who do I think I am? Uh, stories of a... Uh, Chola wishes and caviar dreams. What does caviar dreams mean? It's like dreaming of, of... Big fancy shit, yeah. a better life, a different yeah. life. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, we're going to close this out with a little Inside the Actor Studio questionnaire. Yeah. R.I.P. James Lipton. You no doubt would have been on the show at some point. So we're going to get to know Angela Johnson with 10 questions uh, that uh, 
that James uh, closed the show out with, and I'll play James. Here we go. <clears throat> I'm here with Angela Johnson. <laughs> Angela, what is your favorite word? <laughs> hey, wait, wait, I wasn't ready. <laughs> There's no wrong answer. Okay. <laughs> My favorite word. Um... Hi. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I say that a lot. My nieces say that a lot too. They're 13. Yeah. It's, there I am. It's endearing. What is your least favorite word? Um, my least favorite word it used to be the F word, but mm. then I started saying it and I was like, oh, Ooh. actually, it feels good. What happened? <laughs> you were against it? It was ugly to me. Yeah. It was such an ugly word. I'm like, you. ugh, that's yeah. so ugly. But then I started saying it. I was like, oh, but it do feel good, though. It do feel good. It's <laughs> nice. When said in the right pairing you know? of other words. And it's not too aggressive. Oh. No. It, it's just like the right kind of. So do you prefer a, I don't, you don't curse in your act, no? No. Clean but, show. Yeah. Clean show. But you probably enjoy the, like. Oh, offline, so, offline. So, something happens and yeah, you're like, yeah. fuck. Oh, I wish I great. could just, like when the woman came up to me in my show, yeah. I wish I could just pop off. Oof. Do you know the whole place, Give knowing that ones. you don't curse if you had, would That's have what I'm saying. blown the roof off. Oh. I, you it, don't save a couple I, of those for a rainy day? Uh, oh Keep my God. a couple God. of F-bombs locked and loaded in your back pocket? I have yet to do it on stage. I have yet. Wow. 15 years now, I have yet to do it on stage, but. Trying to keep the street going? I, listen, I'm trying to, I know. <laughs> save one show. Maybe it's like your last show, or I don't know. Yeah, like, if I'm going to retire, yeah, it's going to be go. like, listen. Just call it the fuck it all tour? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, with a PH. All right. Um, <laughs> what turns you on? Ooh. And some people go, uh, you know, pimple more than. popping videos. <laughs> perfect answer. <laughs> now, is there a pimple poppy, poppy, popping video that could be, that could gross you out? Like, could you yeah. see one? Oh, yeah, yeah. There's ones that I don't like. The ones that are real watery. You still watery. watch them, though. Oh, yeah. Like those. I don't like the real watery ones. I just saw one of a guy. It had like a, it was a, it was a, not pus, but it was, a, yeah, it was like, it was like all water cyst. on the top of his foot. I don't like that. I don't like the watery ones. I need some good consistency. Like, give me like Something some clean. thickness. Yeah. Like where, like you can like feel the pressure of it, like Oof. pushing out like that. I like that. Don't, don't give me the liquid that just. Squirts out. And does it need like to that. be like on a foot or a back? Like, can you see, like, you know, when you see a guy in Dr. Pimple face, Popper like walk on in face. on the forehead and he's like, I got this on my foot. It's been there for about 20 years. I like the one when it's like a bunch of little blackheads. Gotcha. I like that. That's manageable. Yeah, yeah. What turns you off? Hmm. Um, arguing mm. with my husband. Yeah. How do you guys get through it? Um, trying oh, to figure that out. How much more time do you have? <laughs> Please. Um, couples therapy? No. Le yes, couples therapy to, for right? sure, for sure. Um, learning each other's uh, communication styles and yeah. love languages. Yeah, that's real. That really helped us Oof. because my husband, he's like, and you could do all kinds of different personality tests. So if you did the Enneagram one, he's an eight on the Enneagram, which means he's a challenger. He likes to debate. Like he thrives off of let's debate. Like mm. let's do that. I shut down. Down, yeah right and he gets really passionate and like he's puerto rican so he's loud by nature like yeah. he doesn't have a whisper tone like he's just when he's on the phone i can't also be on the phone because <laughs> then people think he's talking to them on yeah, my call that's so, so he's funny. just he's a loud person and he gets passionate and so to me that's aggression reminds me of my dad and then now i'm back in my childhood and Whoa. i'm like okay so now yep now it's fight or flight and um and like I said, not good with words. So then next thing you know, we're in a big fight. So um we had to learn our communicating styles. I'm a nine, so I'm a peacemaker, not confrontational, and I shut down. Yeah. So we that took us a while to learn. When he gets big, I shut down because when I would shut down, that would make him more upset because he'd be like, Oh, see, you don't even care about this conversation. See how you're shutting down? You don't even care about this conversation. And Whoa. I'm like, I literally cannot yeah. even oh, man. process this conversation yeah. right now. So we had to learn our different styles and kind of like meet in the way, in in, in the middle, you know, and be like, okay, um, you're getting a little, your volume's too loud. He's like, I'm not yelling. I, I understand that, but your volume's just too loud oh, for me man. right now. Yeah. Like, I need you to bring it. Oh, God, yeah. you do that, too? Right here. Yikes, yeah. A lot of hand gestures <laughs> yeah, yeah. is a quick way to set off any man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> any sort of, if you're like to hear to hear, like, yeah, oh, man. <laughs> Isn't it? <laughs> even just doing that as a bit right now got me charged up. Um, and it wasn't even for me. Is there, uh, isn't it crazy that you can get so heated 
in a fight to think like, we're never coming back from this, and then you do. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, everyone goes through that. Oh, yeah. Like, truly bonkers to me that it's like, at some point, and it's just about figuring out, like you said, like, the love language and how to, like, like, you know, we had this fight once, and it was just like, I was like, in my experience, like, I just need to, like, let's just stop right now for a little bit and just, like, truly just stop. Like, I'm going to, you know, leave you, you know, let's just be, and, like, simmer down i think that's yeah. the move i think yeah. like that's the only move right now mm-hmm. um and otherwise she... you end up on snapped yeah oh my god he didn't compliment my bolognese so i chopped his penis off while yeah. he was sleeping you're like that's the third time i've seen this episode yeah. but it's a different <laughs> set of circumstances yeah. what the fuck um snapped is a yeah that's a another show that's very addicting <laughs> yeah. do you like those crime shows are you kidding me <sighs> wow part two love language Crime shows. Whoa. All whether it's network procedural drama or uh docu style like Forensic Files first forty eight, like that's my jam. So do you ever like lean over to him if you see a certain episode where it's like and then you know and that's she just had enough and got rid of his body in the same night that they went and had Mexican food. And do you ever look at him just be like, see, fucking this is why you gotta like do you ever just give a look? This is like this good you know. I feel like he just knows. He knows, yeah. Like he's aware. Sometimes he doesn't like the crime shows, but sometimes he'll put it on for me. Oh. And he'll be like, Hey babe, wanna like watch one of your crime shows? Or Whoa, something? cool. And I feel like he's trying to like study yeah. too to yeah. know what I know. For sure. He doesn't want to get caught watching it on <laughs> right, his own. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. That's so funny. Um Wow. I feel like you and a crime I just started watching Only Murders in the Building. I just finished the finale. What are you season one or season? Season two? one, probably like three, four episodes deep. I just got. I just finished season two finale. Incredible. It's, Love that show. Might be getting me into that. Like, look, the Gabby Petito stuff. I couldn't turn away from. Mm. That stuff mm-hmm. is fascinating mm-hmm. to me. Mm-hmm. Also, just, I mean, the amount of uh, laziness on so many authorities' parts to actually figure that out mm-hmm. still mm-hmm. is mm-hmm. crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, what is it about you gals that have such a fascination about it? About the whole crime world, the podcast, the shows, the murder, like the docs, the forensic stuff, like just. I don't know exactly, yeah. but one thing that I can think of is um, there's like a bad thing happening, a bad guy being caught. Gotcha. Like it's the vindication. It's mm. like this horrible thing happened because when they don't catch it, I hate that episode. Like yeah. when he's not caught, yeah, I hate that episode. When he actually doesn't get convicted on Law and Order SVU, I'm like, I hate this episode. It's so stupid. But it's when he did a bad thing and he got caught and he got persecuted. He is just in prison for the next 37 years. And I'm like, okay, God, I feel yeah. good. Okay, so if you know there's like a happy ending like that. Yeah, I think so. Um. Okay, um, what uh, what uh, what is your favorite curse word? I guess the F word. We yeah, we just discussed that. Oh, you're not even gonna okay. give me one, huh? Okay. You don't have to. Do you, want, do you want it with aggression or like what's the recipe for this one? Like, is it just? I mean, let's put you in a situation. Because now I feel like we're in the the Whitney Whitney Cummings uh, Miranda uh, oh, what's yeah. her name oh, yeah, in yeah. that yeah. clip went viral. Oh, <laughs> what's your favorite sure. curse word? And she said the F word. Yeah, I can't she, do it. No, no. I'm not gonna do it because now okay, it's great. gonna be okay, like we're great. doing her episode. Okay, great. <laughs> um, but you did say you like a good to yourself, I do enjoy the frustrated. Effort, yes. You're in line maybe at uh, a coffee shop. Someone's taking too long. Yeah, you yeah, got yeah. somewhere to be. Uh, we do it. We do. We, we do it to yourself or in your oh, head. Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, to myself. Yeah, usually. Yeah. Um, to myself. But one that uh, I would say, um, I mean, shit is a good one that I is just all the time. Yep. Okay. In, good. In my mouth. Love that. It's right. a great one. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Perfect. One. Okay. What sound or noise do you love? What sound of noise? Sound or noise do you? Oh, love? okay. What sound or noise do I love? Um, oh yeah, my sleep sound. I I listen to sleep sound every night to go to sleep, um, and I can't listen to the waves Oof. or a thunderstorm, like because I need it to be the same repetition over and over you can't mix it up with the wave sometimes it's a crashing wave sometimes it's not a crashing wave and like that now i'm gonna wake up because it wasn't a rhythm so i have to listen to like a blanket sound of rain like it's just the same shh and it doesn't change the whole night yeah whole time. yeah wow wow 
Mm-hmm. Or the fan. I listen to a fan noise. I have fan on my yeah. app. Yes. And it's just box fan. You couldn't hear like the murmuring of like detectives solving a crime like no. late night? No, no. I don't like to fall asleep to TV. Yeah. What sound of noise do you hate? Um, My husband's eating yeah. noises. Women hate that. <laughs> Fuck the chomping, I know. I'm already stuck. Yeah. Unbelievable. Gotta control that, fellas. I'm like, bruh. Yeah, figure it out. <laughs> You've been eating for 20 to 30 years. Yeah. <laughs> Time to figure out how to chew properly and in public. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. What profession other uh, than your own would you like to attempt? Uh, massage therapist. What profession would you not like to do? Uh, anything with manual labor. If heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? Hi. <laughs> Great answer. <laughs> Angela Johnson. You're a beast. You're Thanks, amazing. Man. Thanks um, for having me. Really pumped to finish the book. I, again, I have not uh, gotten into a book in so long. So thanks for having the audio version and thanks for being fucking interesting. Thank you. Sorry for cursing. Um, <laughs> it was a- my favorite one. It's okay. Thank you. Um, you're on tour dates, AngelaJohnson.com? Just Angela.com. Angela. A-N-J-E-L-A-H.com. That's easy. Mm-hmm. That must have been fun when you saw that was available. Well, somebody stole it at first and they, they tried to get me to pay them a lot of money Damn. for it. And I was like, I'm going to go ahead and wait the seven years until your contract's up and then I'm just going to swoop in and get it. And so that's what I did. Good move. Yeah. Fucking <laughs> feisty. I love that. Uh, Angela.com and you're on Twitter and Instagram, Angela Johnson. Johnson. Mm-hmm. And, um, and go get the book. Thank you. Wherever books are sold. You think it's your last, bo- your last book? You're going to do another one? I think I'll do another one. Okay. I don't know when, but... I'm sure I have another one. I hate that I even asked you that. It's like, fucking, that's my one of my big pet peeves. Like, when people are like on the so field after next? they win the Super Bowl, like, you think you can do it again? You're like, give me five minutes, <laughs> man, to enjoy. <laughs> All right. You're the best. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for being here. Mmm, Zoa. Thanks, Rock. Guys, Adam Ray here for the About Last Night podcast. Hope you enjoyed that episode. It was a good one. A lot of laughs, a lot of tears, a lot of, uh, stuff to uh to think about and chew on huh because that's what life's all about chewing on the good stuff nobody said that maybe denzel did maybe tom hanks did maybe they said it together in philadelphia the point is click subscribe right here on the aln logo so you can get more episodes and stay up to date when new content drops highlights animations clips it's all here for you baby i'll see you next time well i don't know how to blink